uh, 15th year anniversary. So um, I've been in the culinary in in industry now for you know, dating myself, but going on almost 30 years now. I started cooking right out of high school um, and I was going to community college, had no idea what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. Um, and I stumbled into a restaurant and got a job at a small little pizza place, an Italian restaurant in the, the suburb of Cleveland where I was grow growing up at the time. Fell in love with the industry, went to culinary school from there. Uh, and then I've always wanted to open my own restaurant. I've been a very entrepreneurially based type person. Even as a kid, I was doing the, doing the lemonade stands, the garage sales, you know, do, doing whatever I could to make a buck. Um, and I always wanted to open my own business. I didn't know what it was going to be until I got into the restaurant industry. And then poof, you know, the light bulb went off and I was like, aha, I'm going to open a restaurant. That's a smart idea. Right. So, um, I worked in the industry for about 15 years, cutting my teeth in different restaurants around the Cleveland area. Uh, and then back in 2006, I found a little storefront bar that had a kitchen attached to it, uh, in another suburb of Cleveland, Ohio, a city called Lakewood. And I was actually living in Lakewood at the time, bought the business, closed it. And then three of my friends and myself renovated the space ourselves for seven months. And then we grand opened September 22nd, 2006 as Mel Farm Grilled. So gourmet grilled cheese. Uh, we have about 27 different grilled cheese sandwiches on the menu at any time. We also do fresh soups, fresh salads, awesome appetizers, have a full bar. Uh, we focus on craft beer as well. So it was really a craft beer bar and a grilled cheese bar kind of meshed together way back in the day. So we've uh, fortunately, you know, opened up very well and we we're very popular from day one. So we've expanded the restaurant several different times over the last 15 years. And we grew from like our little humble beginnings back in 2006 of one little storefront restaurant that seat, we sat about 50 people and I had 12 employees to today where we have nine restaurants open and operating throughout Ohio and I have over 250 employees. So it's a very different environment than it was back in the day. But, um, you know, people always said, why grilled cheese, Matt? Why would you focus on a simple thing like that? And to be honest with you, grilled cheese has always been a favorite food of mine. It was something that I grew up with as a kid. I took it into my high school, my college, even in my adult years. Even when I was cooking in other different other restaurants around Cleveland, I always was making a grilled cheese sandwich for myself at the end of the night. I was finding good bread, good cheese, and I was making this big sandwich, taking it home, watching late night television, go back to work the next day and do it all over again. Well, the, the idea for milk came, came into my brain when other, other staff members would see me making these grilled cheese sandwiches and their eyes would get really big and they'd be like, oh, that looks so cool. Can you make me one? Can you make me one? Make me one. So at the end of the night at these restaurants that have really nice menus, I was making these silly grilled cheese sandwiches for the, the entire staff. So I, I said, hey, maybe there's something to this. So as I was writing menus for what was going to turn into my restaurant, I kept coming back to this grilled cheese menu that I had focused on. And I said, you know what? I'm a risk taker. I like, I like taking risks. I like fun, different things. I've never seen a grilled cheese restaurant up to that point. So I was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. If it works, great. This could be the rest of my life. If it fails, so what? I'll pick up the pieces and start over again. Well, 15 years later, here we are. I'm still, I'm still doing it. And you guys are now looking into my kitchen at home in a suburb of Cleveland where I'm going to make you some grilled cheese sandwiches. So um, I'm going to keep this really loose and fun. Um, hopefully you guys will keep it loose and fun at home. Ask questions, throw some stuff out. Rachel and Kristen are, are kind of uh, emceeing this thing for me. So if you could get her the questions or get them the questions they can throw them at me. Um, but we're going to start if you guys are cool with that. And we have some fans, Matt. looks like some of our folks today have been to your Columbus location and some are planning to go on their road trip. So that's hey, well, thank you guys. Thank you guys very much. Yeah. If you, if you're in Ohio or if you're in the Midwest, come, come and visit us. You know, we see a lot of travelers from all over the country. We've been on diners, drivers and dives a couple of times, food, food paradise, man versus food. You can check out all those videos on our website. So I'll, I'll plug the website really quick and then I'll do it at the end. It's Melt Bar and Grilled, G-R-E-G-R-I-L-L-E-D.com. The full menu's up there, videos. There's a ton of content if you, ever, if you want to deep dive into what Melt Bar and Grilled is or just come to Cleveland or Columbus and check us out. We're also in Dayton if you're close to Dayton or Canton. Um, we're not in Cincinnati yet, but we're, we've, we've looked several times. We've looked several times in, in, in Cincinnati. So I think uh, 
I know we looked in the over the Rhine area. We looked at a couple of other areas. So uh, I would, I'd be surprised if we weren't in Cincinnati, maybe in the next five years, but um, the, the pandemic. I just threw really the slowed. link in the chat for anyone who needs to click into it. Yeah. The pandemic slowed our, um, slowed our expansion down <coughs> slightly. So we, we're going to take a couple of years to just recover and get back to, to normalcy a little bit before we, before I spend a lot of money to open another restaurant. But so anyway, so grilled cheese, it's very simple, but it's also very complex. Um, it, it's the simplest concept on earth. And a lot of people kind of shook their head at me when I was going to open a grilled cheese restaurant and were like, why I can make that at home? Or why would you focus a whole restaurant on a silly grilled cheese sandwich? Well, as I was playing with a lot of the ingredients, I realized that I could do almost anything with a grilled cheese sandwich. I could take any plated entree that you were typically used to seeing in a restaurant setting, especially like a diner or a blue plate special kind of place, even a fine dining restaurant. I, we dissect regular entrees and we put them all inside of a grilled cheese sandwiches. Now the three sandwiches I'll show you today are some of our more simple sandwiches. Um, but you know, the, the complexity of what goes on in our stores is, is immense. It's not just one person in the back producing like silly grilled cheese sandwiches. I mean, we're serving, you know, close to five to 800 people a day in some of our locations. So making 800 grilled cheese sandwiches a day actually is a daunting task, believe it or not. So we start with the ingredients, obviously. We're talking about bread, we're talking about cheese. So here's the bread that we use. It's about as big as my head, as you can see that. Um, there's a bakery in Pittsburgh that we have partnered with called Mediterra Bakehouse, and there won't be a quiz at the end, so you don't have to remember any of this information, but we came up with a hybrid loaf. Uh, myself and the bakers came up with an awesome loaf. It's, it's half between a French and it's half Italian. So our bread is very soft and fluffy on the inside, a lot of flavors, a lot of, a lot of aromatics in there. So you get a lot of the Italian bread feeling from the inside, but the outside is very crusty, it's very chewy, it re resembles a French bread very much. So it's kind of a hybrid loaf. So when we toast it, I want you to bite, bite into it, get that chewy exterior of the crust, but also get the kind of the, the flavor notes um, of the interior of the bread. And so I'll show you this. So this is the bread that is uh, already buttered. We call it buttered, but we actually use a vegan margarine because we focus on a lot of vegan and vegetarian items at the restaurant. So we use one universal fat spread on all of our breads, which, which is a vegan margarine. And we do both sides because the key to a good grilled cheese sandwich is actually toasting both sides of the bread, believe it or not. Now you can use butter, you can use margarine, you can use olive oil, you can use vegetable oil. I've seen people even use mayonnaise, believe it or not, because mayonnaise is an egg and oil-based product. So you are gonna get a good fat content out of it. I've seen people use bacon fat, lard, all these kind of things to, to coat their grilled cheese sandwiches with. So if you're playing at home after this, I mean, go crazy, look on the internet and see what, they, what you come up with because there's a lot of fun, cool, interesting things. We use just a plain old, and I hate to say plain old, but margarine, it's got a decent uh, salt content to it, but, um, sorry, I gotta get rid of that. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna toast the bread and it's gonna end up looking like this. See both sides? So I'm gonna take you guys down a little bit. You can see what I got going on down here. So I've got a, I've got a big pan, I got a small pan. So I'm gonna take my bread. Hopefully you can hear the sizzle. Can you hear it a little bit? Yep, we can hear it. And Matt, awesome. there was a question, if you're gluten-free, what bread do you recommend? So we use a gluten-free bread at the restaurant and we actually have a, a we have a separate gluten-free menu. Believe it or not, a grilled cheese sandwich restaurant actually has a gluten-free menu. So we have a gluten-free menu and we also have a vegan and vegetarian menu that are separate from our regular menu. Um, we use a bread, unfortunately, that's a commercial uh, loaf that it comes from a bakery called the Flour Bakery, which is a national bakery that focuses on gluten-free. And un unfortunately, it's not available to the general public. However, um, we've, I've tried and sampled several different uh, gluten-free breads that are commercially available in grocery stores around, around the state and probably around the country, and they all perform very well. We actually use, we actually make two sandwiches with a gluten-free bread to equal the size of our, of our, of our, of our, uh, our regular bread. But, and it really depends. If you're gluten-free also, you'll probably know, but, Make sure you're aware of um, 
what kind of spread you're using because a lot of butters and a lot of margarines are not gluten-free. The, the particular margin that we use in our stores is not gluten-free. So we actually have a separate uh, gluten-free margarine that we use in our stores. So I don't know if you can see what's going on down here, but you, if you can see that the, the, the margarine on the top is starting to get very melty. So I like to wait until the majority of the butter or the margarine on top of the sandwich is almost completely melted down to where it's soaking into the bread a little bit before I will we'll flip it. I might cheat a little bit to see how we're looking. So I don't wanna look like a fool on national television here, but. I so. was just remarking in the chat, Matt, that I have never buttered both sides of my bread. So that's an immediate game changer. Me well, neither. <laughs> the, reason, the reason that we do it and the reason that if you're making a grilled cheese sandwich at home, and it's not 100% necessary, I'll be completely honest with you, but the flavor of the sandwich is going to be heightened because you are now toasting both sides of the bread. So you're getting those toasted um, kind of nutty flavors from both sides of the bread. And it adds to the stability of the sandwich because sometimes if people under toast their bread, the sandwiches are kind of limp and weak. And they're not fun to eat because our sandwiches, you know, we, we, we put about a quarter pound of cheese on every sandwich. So you get four ounces of cheese on every sandwich or more. Um, and some of the sandwiches, you know, have three, four, five, six components on them. They have um, liquid sauces. They have a lot of different flavor profiles going on. So by toasting the bread on both sides, um, you're also adding a lot of stability to the sandwich. And then you can build it. You can build these big Dagwood type sandwiches and you're not gonna have any issues. So you can see, I flipped the bread over. I toasted one side. I'm gonna toast the other side really, really well. We're making, let me bring you up. We're making a, uh, what, we, what we call the kindergarten. It's on our menu. It's called the kindergarten. It's our basic bread and cheese sandwich. You know, we all start in, in school at, in kindergarten. So this is kind of the intro. Um, and the best thing about the kindergarten sandwich at Melt is we have about 117 different add-on items that you can put onto a grilled cheese sandwich. So this sandwich will come to you plain with your cheese choice and your bread, and we serve hand-cut fries or, or kettle chips with it. But you can add a ton of different ingredients to this sandwich. So all those comments you guys were getting at before about you know what to add to the sandwich, all those things would go on this kindergarten. So. I'm going to bring you back down. So you see, I've got the one side toasted. I've got the other side toasted really nice. So I'm going to move. I'm going to shift this over to a sheet tray, actually. And I'm going to do this like so. And then I've got our American cheese. I'm going to make a classic right now, just a classic kindergarten. So I take four slices of American. I'm going to spread them out equally on the sandwich. I'm going to go edge to edge with it. Now, if you really want to get clever, you can fold all the edges in. So you're not going to waste any of that, any of that cheese. We don't particularly do this in the restaurant because we're, we're kind of high volume. So we're going pretty fast. But when I'm at home, I do like to cheat a little bit and I like to bring the edges in. So I'm going to walk with me, you guys. So we put them on a sheet tray and I would suggest doing this at home because honestly, you're going to get a better melt out of it. You can finish the sandwich in the, in the saute pan. That is possible. Um, but what I find is that you're gonna continue, unless you turn the heat off. So here's the problem with finishing the sandwich in the pan. So your bread is gonna continue to toast no matter what happens. And if you turn your heat off, you're gonna lose, your, you're gonna lose the heat that you need to melt this cheese. So we put these sandwiches in the oven at the restaurant. And when I make grilled cheese at home for my son or my wife, or she makes it for me, believe it or not, I have her put it in our oven. So we're going to walk back here. You guys get the grand tour of my kitchen. So Matt, did you coin the term fold the cheese before it was aired on Schitt's Creek? Or did you take that term from Schitt's Creek? You know what? I, I watched Schitt's Creek, but I don't remember that term. When, when, there's an episode. Give me the reference. Um, so I remember. There's an episode where they're making Mexican dinner, and Moira says, "Fold the cheese." And David asks, "Oh, what do you mean by fold the cheese?" And she's like, "I don't know. Just fold the cheese. Don't you know how to fold the cheese?" And there's tons of memes about it. Oh, uh, I, 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 I remember that episode. Yeah, that that was one of our favorite shows uh, of last year. My wife and I watched it. It was great. A good pandemic binger. 
It was. So I've got my oven at 400 degrees because I want it, I want it to be hot and I want it to be quick. I'm not going to set this at 200, 250, 300. And everybody's oven is different at home. Some run hot, some run cold. So I would suggest playing with, with the temperature, but a good benchmark is going to be about 400 to 450 um, because I just want to melt this cheese. I'm not looking to cook the bread. I'm not looking to get it to be crispy because um, the lower the temperature, you're still going to melt the cheese because no matter what, when you put heat to cheese, it's going to melt. However, if I leave this sandwich in the oven for much longer than a minute or two, I'm going to end up with having a crouton with cheese on top of it. And that's not the goal. So, and then we want that fat. You, you don't want to really cook that, that margarine, the butter out of the sandwich. You still want that, that, that flavor in there. You want it to be nice and soft. So let's see where we're at. Almost, almost, almost. I could probably could have cheated and actually turn my oven up to 450 because I think it's going to, might take a little longer. So I, I might cheat a little bit and turn it up a little. So my favorite, I know we're, we're talking about favorite add-ons for a grilled cheese sandwich. Here's my favorite right here. Avocado. Yum. This is one of my favorite at, whoa. Oh, don't lose it. <laughs> it slides off the plate. See how, how, how quick I was with that? So there's another question. Do you have a Gene Simmons inspired grilled cheese? Someone recognizes that there might be a Kiss fan in the house. I am a Kiss fan and we actually have some some shirts and stuff that we, um, we have some merchandise that was inspired by Kiss. I haven't, you know what? I haven't come up with a grilled cheese sandwich yet that it, that um, that's Kiss inspired. I'm surprised by that. I'm afraid to get sued by Gene Simmons. You know, he's a he's a big player in the industry, right? Also, I'm not sure how many folks on the phone have ever toasted both sides of the bread and then put the cheese on, but I surely have not been doing that, which is probably why my grilled cheeses are not fantastic. <laughs> okay, so I've got my cheese right here. Now I've got two different knives because I really want to show you the, I know it, this, this is silly stuff, but I've got two knives. I've got a regular bread knife here, okay? And I've also got a, another a kind of an inverted bread knife. So I prefer this much, much better in any sort of setting when I'm cutting bread than, than a traditional flat bread knife. And the reason is, is because when I'm holding it, you guys see where my knuckles are falling. My knuckles will never touch the cutting board. So I can come down on a big loaf of bread and I'm never going to be jammed up with my knuckles going in there. So we actually use a lot of these inverted knives at the restaurant and you can find these at, at any restaurant supply house online. Any knife company is going to produce these. They have very inexpensive knives like this. They have very expensive knives like this, but this is a great bread knife to have at home, serrated obviously. Um, and the inverted handle where your, where your knuckles are kind of kind of hiding inside of there, I, I think are, is the best. So I've got my sandwich here, really simple. I'm gonna put avocado on here because like I said, this is avocado is my favorite add-on that we have at the restaurant and I'm always asked the question, Matt, what's your favorite sandwich on the menu at Melt? Well, truly my favorite sandwich on the rest at the restaurant is a kindergarten with American cheese, pepper jack, a fried egg, a grilled tomato, and avocado. That is my favorite sandwich at Melt. It's something we can, you can just make up on our on our menu. So That sounds delicious. So here's an awesome grilled cheese sandwich. This is the kindergarten with avocado. I'm gonna put it over there. We can stack it up. We can have a little showcase later on. So we're gonna move on to sandwich number two. If you guys are good, we'll call that the 101. We'll call that grilled cheese 101 there. Um, and a, probably a good a good thing to point out too is that I don't add any extra oils or fats or anything to my pan. It's a dry pan, so you guys can see. I don't know if you can see, but the pan is completely dry. I prefer, now at the restaurant, we have a very large um, non-stick flat top. Normally they're between four and six feet wide, believe it or not. So I'm not expecting you guys to have that at home, obviously. Um, you're gonna be essentially making a grilled cheese sandwich either in a saute pan or in a griddle or a cast iron pan at home. Um, if you can use a, uh, a non-stick pan, some sort of Teflon coated pan, that's probably ideal. Not 100% necessary, but a lot of times if you're using a nonstick pan, um, 
they're going to have some sticky parts to them. And you, your, if your pan's not hot enough when you start, um, or if it's too hot, you might get some sticking going on on there. So, okay, we're going to start our second grilled cheese sandwich. We're going to move on to a sandwich that we like to call the wake and bacon. Um, it's kind of our our breakfasty type sandwich. Um, it's got American cheese, bacon, fried eggs. Uh, American cheese. So we're gonna we're gonna start with our bread again. We're gonna toast it up, and I'm gonna bring you guys down here because I'm gonna fry up two eggs while I'm talking to you. I'm a big egg fan. I love eggs. It's also a great add-on to a grilled cheese sandwich. So I've got two eggs here. This pan might, this pan's kind of hot, so we'll see what happens. Uh-oh. Do you ever add sausage and gravy to this one to like dip it into or just keep it as is? You know what? The best thing about a grilled cheese sandwich is what I found is there are no rules. You can do whatever you want. That's the best part that I, you're not following any sort of recipe, you know, like, Go online and try to find a, a hardcore, besides going to like the Melt website, trying to find like a specific, you know, grilled cheese recipe for X, Y, or Z. You know, you can, if you have any culinary chops, which if you do, great. If you don't, no, it's not a problem either. I'm gonna add a little salt to this. Like I said at the beginning, the coolest thing about the grilled cheese sandwich while I was playing with it for the, for the restaurant was that I found my, I could do anything with the sandwich. I could do any, every single thing. You know, we have Italian inspired sandwiches. We have Asian inspired sandwiches. We have Polish inspired sandwiches. You know, we have, we've, we've gone through every cuisine basically that you can come up with. We have a chicken paprikash sandwich. We have a lasagna sandwich. We have a fried fish sandwich. Um, you know, I rattled off that French onion burger that we do with a French onion dip and and French fried onions and Swiss cheese. So if you go to the website, you're gonna see a ton of different options, a ton of different fun sandwiches. We have a sandwich with pizza rolls on it. So that I mean, sounds right up my alley. Oh, who doesn't love a pizza roll? Yeah. Matt, you mentioned that you were on diners and drive-in and was it man versus food? What was the feature? So we did diners, drive-ins and dives. Uh, way back at the beginning, we were actually, I think, in the third season, um, and that was a lot of fun because it was super popular, but it, it hadn't taken off to, like, the incredible heights that it is today. Um, it was fun. It was really fun and interesting and cool. We did three different sandwiches on there. Um, we did, shoot, I don't know if I remember correctly what we did. We did a sandwich called the Big Popper, which is a, um, a jalapeno popper inspired sandwich. We actually, we make a grilled cheese sandwich with um, an herb cream cheese. We put sauteed jalapenos inside of it. We close the sandwich. We actually batter and we, we beer batter and deep fry the entire sandwich and cut it open. And then all the cheese and the jalapenos just kind of come oozing out and we serve it with a, um, a berry sauce, a berry jam on the side. We did that sandwich on there. Uh, we did a sandwich that's not on our menu any longer called the Tokyo Tuna Melt and was actually a uh, sushi grade yellowfin tuna steak that we would grill uh, with Munster cheese, lettuce, and tomato. And we made a, uh, a wasabi dressing that went on that sandwich. Um, and then we, had, we have a sandwich. Are you guys familiar with what pierogies are down in the Cincinnati, down in the Natty? We are, I'm at least familiar with pierogies. My husband's family loves pierogies. And I believe there's actually a shop down in OTR now that sells them. We're getting some comments in the chat of folks who love pierogies. Well, good, because we actually have, we actually have, we have a pierogi inspired sandwich because uh, pierogies are king in Cleveland. Uh, we have a huge Polish and Slovenian population here in Cleveland. So if you don't know what a, what a pierogi is in, from Cleveland, you got to get out. That's kind of the rule, but um but pierogies if you aren't familiar with what a pierogi is it's a it's a dough dumpling um that is filled with pretty much anything under the sun but typically you see um potato and onion potato and cheese potato and sauerkraut just sauerkraut but i've seen pierogies filled with everything and anything under the sun so we have a sandwich on our menu called the parmageddon 
Um, and there's a, there's a city, there's a suburb of Cleveland called Parma, Parma, Ohio. Um, and then that is quote unquote, the, um, the Polish capital of the United States, supposedly. Have you guys ever seen the Drew Carey show? Do you remember the Drew Carey show back in the nineties? Yeah, well, some not, yes. <laughs> Drew Carey is from Cleveland and the show, the Drew Carey show was supposed to have taken place in Parma, Ohio. So. So there's a question for you, Matt. So Guy does follow-ups on his show. Has he reached back out to see how you're doing now? Yeah, we just finished that episode and it just aired um, late last year. It was, uh, I forget this, the show, it's called like the Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives Revisited or something like that. So we filmed it during the pandemic in 2000, or maybe we filmed it in, in 2019. I think I might've filmed it in 2019 and it aired uh, it aired in October of last year. I specifically remember that. So yes, we, we've, we've been revisited by Guy, but Guy doesn't come out for the second round. He only comes out for the first round. So all the voiceovers and stuff that he does are done in a studio someplace else. So, but he's a good guy. Ha, get it? Guy's a good guy. <laughs> I, There's a fun fact that Mike... Mike, like AK Miz, I don't even know how to say his last name, is also from Parma, from the WWE. Mizanin. Mizanin, Mike Mizanin. I know hey. he goes by the Miz, and that's always what I've called him. <laughs> is, Mike, is Mike on the, uh, is, he, is he watching us right now? No, he's on uh, that TV show. Um, oh, the Miz. Yeah, the Miz. The Miz and Mrs. Or? Yeah. yeah, he's from Parma. He actually was, yeah, I don't know him personally, but I know a bunch of people that do know him because we're about the same age. So I know a bunch of people that went to high school with him. So I'm going to, I'm going to showcase our, our wake and bacon here. If you guys were paying attention while I was chatting. So we've got American cheese, two fried eggs. I've got six strips of bacon on here, a pre-cooked bacon. So I cooked the bacon ahead of time. I cooled it. Um, so now it's, it's obviously cooked bacon, but it's a little cold. Um, about room temperature bacon. Um, you can put hot bacon on here. You can cook the bacon, put it right in the sandwich, take it right into the oven, melt everything together. Ideally, that's the perfect world. But so we're going to take her over here. Pop it in my oven. So the wake and bacon is super popular. That's been on the menu since day one. Um, the kindergarten has been on the, on the menu since day one. And the last sandwich we're going to make has actually been on the sandwich, uh, it's been on the menu since day one. So um, we switch stuff around a lot. We do seasonal specials. We do special menus. Uh, we've changed our menu several different times, but I would say out of the 27 or so sandwiches that are still on the, that are on the menu today, um, at least half of them or more than half were on the original menu back in 2006. Um, we make everything from scratch at the restaurant. There's no, uh, pre-made, open up a can or a box and serve it to our guests. I mean, I'm very, I'm very specific about the way that I want the restaurant to run, especially the food aspect of it. And I want Mel to be a very unique experience for our guests. I, I, I honestly can say you can't get the same experience you get at Mel Bar and Grill. You can't get the same food, the same service, the same atmosphere, the same experience. We call it the Melt Experience anywhere else in the country, let alone in the world. I mean, we've created, I've tried to create a very, a very unique experience for our guests where I want people to come in and find us. You know, if we're in your backyard, if, if you can walk to the restaurant or, you know, we see a lot of people, especially in the summertime um, that, that are driving through Cleveland and, you know, they're, hey, we're driving from Detroit to New York or we're going from New York to, to, to Colorado and we're stopping in Cleveland for the night because we only know about two things in Cleveland. We know about the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and we know about Melt. So we're going to both. I'm like, that's great. <laughs> I'm glad we're on, that we're, we're, that, we're on, that we're on your list, you know? So Matt, what would you say is your like most frequently requested grilled cheese? Uh, I mean, the we one have, you feel like you make the most. Oh, the, the, the top seller at our stores is a sandwich that we're not making today, but it's called the Cleveland cheesesteak. It's kind of my ode to a classic Philly cheesesteak, but we, we switch it up a little bit. So I want to make it the Cleveland cheesesteak. So it's, um, it's roasted pulled beef brisket, sauteed mushrooms, sauteed onions, sauteed peppers, um, provolone cheese, 
and then we make a uh, an, a rosemary onion aioli for the sandwich, which is kind of like a mayonnaise um, spread that's on there. And it is by far the most popular sandwich that we have on the menu. I think we sold. Um, I'll take 2020 out of the, the equation because that's a, that was a slower year for us, obviously. But pre-pandemic, we sell about one to 1.3 million of those a year. So, Dang. yeah, we make a lot of sandwiches at Melt. <laughs> did you say a million? I did, yes. 1.3 million. What's the most you've ever had cooking at one time? Uh... Because I can't even make three for my family and keep them all hot. Well, like I said, I mean, we, we, you know, we serve anywhere between, you know, typically right now we're, we're, we're serving and we're still lower capacity at, at the restaurants, unfortunately, because of the pandemic still. Um, but, you know, we'll see anywhere between, you know, a couple hundred people a day up to, you know, we're probably maxing out about 600 people a day right now because of the pandemic. Um, and, you know, we've got nine stores open and operating and some stores are busier than others. The most sandwiches we've ever made uh, in one day, uh, the record is, is uh, 1,260 in one day out of one store. That's one restaurant. Um, that was our, our store in, in Cleveland in a, in a in one of our, in a suburb, it's still open. I'm talking about it like in past tense, like it's, you know, post-mortem here, but it's still open and operating. It's, it's one of our, it's still one of our busier stores in the company. We're not doing that, those type of numbers out of there, but um, a couple of years after we opened up, it was actually in February, believe it or not, which is like very odd in the restaurant world because February is typically one of the slower months of the year. But one, one day on a Saturday, we cranked out 1,260 sandwiches and um, that's still the, the numbers is written on a piece of paper hanging out in my office and I stare at it all the time because that's still the record so that's really the only reason I remember that number I didn't pull it out of thin air I actually have it written down in my office so um, here's our here's the wake and bacon right here I don't know if you can see the steam coming off of it but it's looks super, delicious super hot we're getting some comments. Looks delicious. That's my type of sandwich. There is a question on, do you ever flavor the bread with garlic or red pepper or anything like that to, we, to add to the bread? We, we do not. At the restaurant, we do not. And I'm coming around here. I'll, give me a sec. We don't. And I'll tell you why. Because we at the restaurant use, like I mentioned earlier, a big flat top situation where the bread goes on, it gets toasted. Well, all the bread for every single sandwich goes on that same flat top. And we do clean it throughout the day. But if I was to flavor a sandwich with garlic and put it on that flat top to make an Italian centric sandwich, like we have a lot of those on the menu, I could potentially make a sweet sandwich right after that because we have a, a, a grilled peanut butter and banana sandwich on our menu with sweet cream cheese, a grilled banana, candy peanuts, um, and it comes with a berry sauce to dip it in, which is one of my favorite sandwiches on the menu. So if I made that sandwich directly after I made the garlic centric sandwich, you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of those flavors that are gonna be incorporated into that into that sweet sandwich, and that's what we're trying to avoid. So we keep our flat top very very neutral. We actually keep our flat top um, vegetarian and vegan. We don't cook any meats on our flat top. Um, um, it's not, I'm sorry, it's not vegan, it's vegetarian because we, we do have, we do put the cheese, we compose a lot of the sandwiches on the flat top, then transfer them to the sheet tray and then they go into our oven for a quick melt. So, um, so to answer that question, you can do whatever you want to at home. Uh, yes, flavor, put hot, put hot pepper seeds on there if you like hot stuff. You can make different compound butters. You can make a lemon centric butter. You can make a, um, an Italian centric. You can put, make garlic bread. You know, you can do all those type of things at home. We just, we just choose not to at the restaurant because we like to keep everything very neutral on our flat top. You know, I've got my, my Empire Strikes Back coffee mug. Show my nerd, my nerdism there. Okay, so like we have a lot of cooks that are going to be cooking tonight, Matt. So they're excited to try some of these new tips and tricks. I hope so. I hope so. I'm hoping my, hopefully we can inspire somebody. Looks like someone's going to visit your Dayton location this weekend too. Yeah, we're up in, we're in Fairfield Commons. If you're familiar with Dayton at all, um, 
It's a little bit north of the city. It's, it's near the Air Force Base. That's a good Kevin snowplow. said the force is strong with Matt. The force is strong with me. Hey, we're doing, um, if you, if you want to get to melt and you're a Star Wars fan, this is fun and cool. If you guys, if you're a Star Wars fan, do you know what's coming in May? Does anybody know what's coming in May? If you're yeah, a Star May, May the 4th be with you. May the 4th is coming up. So Tuesday, May the 4th is International Star Wars Day. And it's celebrated in the entire universe, believe it or not. So all the Star Wars nerds out there get together and they celebrate Star Wars on May the 4th. So we've done this for years and we celebrate on May the 4th as well. And we're actually doing a week long promotion for May the 4th. And we, we roll out different Star Wars themed sandwiches. We have Star Wars themed cocktails that are coming out. So we're running that May the 4th through May the 9th. So if you're gonna get to a melt, if you're gonna make a road trip, maybe come in uh, next weekend or next week during May the 4th stuff. So we're doing a Han Solo burger. We're doing a, uh, a Vader's Thai fighter melt. It's a Thai food inspired sandwich. Uh, we do a sandwich called the Wookiee, which is our, um, it's a sweet sandwich and get ready for this one. So it's got a grilled banana, sweet, uh, sweet cream cheese, chocolate chips, butterscotch chips, all inside the grilled cheese sandwich that, that I'm showing you today. And then we take the whole sandwich and we deep fry it. We, we batter it and deep fry it. And then we take that out of the fryer and then we dip the entire sandwich and we coat it in chocolate. And then we roll that entire sandwich in toasted coconut. So then, so it looks like a brown Wookiee. It's, it's pretty intense. So you had folks at the deep fried and chocolate, lots of wows, OMG. Oh my goodness. Okay, so last sandwich, and this one's gonna be a little fun and a little interesting because I haven't done this in quite a while. So we're gonna make a sandwich called the Monte Cristo. And a Monte Cristo is a, it's a, it's a classic traditional sandwich. It's a, it's a French inf inspired sandwich. Um, it's kind of big in New Orleans cooking, but it's, 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 um, it's, it's been around forever. So our take on the traditional Monte Cristo is, um, it's got American cheese, it's got Swiss cheese, it's got honey ham, it's got roasted turkey, and then we take the entire sandwich and we beer batter it and deep fry it, and then we bring it out and we coat it with powdered sugar, and then we serve it with a berry dipping sauce on the side. So this is also one of our most popular sandwiches and it's been on the menu since day one. So, but the traditional Monte Cristo, which we don't do, um, is to serve the, serve the sandwich on French toast. That is their traditional Monte Cristo. Um, and we do actually have this sandwich on our brunch menu because we run a brunch menu in some of our locations on Saturdays and Sundays. So I'm gonna make the Monte Cristo the traditional way, our brunch Monte Cristo today, where we're gonna actually make a French toast batter, we're gonna make French toast, and then we're gonna compose the grilled cheese sandwich on French toast. This is fun, this is a cool brunch sandwich. If, if you guys are brunch foodies out there and you wanna impress your friends or your significant other at home, this one's super, super simple. So I'm gonna actually bring my bowl around here. Can you see that? So I've got a nice big mixing bowl here. This is about, this is the biggest I've got at home. This is certainly not the biggest you can find, but this is, this is will suit, suit us well today. So I've got, um, <clears throat> I am doing one quart of um, scrambled eggs to one to four ounces of uh, milk. And that's whole milk I'm using. You can also use, um, if you want, you can use skim milk. You can use 2% uh, milk. I just choose to use the whole milk right there. So you can obviously already see this is a very heavy eggy. French toast. I've got a little bit of uh, vanilla going in there. I've got some kosher salt. I've got some white sugar that I'm putting in there. And then a good amount of cinnamon that's going in there. I'm just going to whisk that up really well. We got some comments, Matt, that this will be much better than the Monte Cristo wrap that we used to have in our pavilion when we were in the office. 
<laughs> what 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 did that con contain? I'm I'm really I'm morbidly curious to find out. Jennifer, what did it have in it? Um, I, it, I had had it had the ham and turkey, and I think Swiss. They would sometimes give us the berry, like the it was like mayonnaise berry mayo, but they put it in a tortilla. Oh, and I it was usually cold when you took a bite <laughs> it wasn't warm so i'm like this has got to be better than that because it's a grilled cheese that's very odd i i i, I, I feel bad for you guys I'm, i apologize it looks like someone also asked if you have any vegan options in the restaurant a ton of vegan options we actually have an entire menu dedicated to to vegan all of our all of our vegan offerings you can go to the website, meltbarngrill.com, M-E-L-T-B-A-R-A-N-D-G-R-I-L-L-E-D.com. And you can click on the menus tab and then all the menus will open up that we have on there. So you see the regular menu, you'll see our vegan menu, you see our gluten-free menu. So what I would suggest if you're going to Melt to uh, talk to your server and let them know that you're, that you're vegan or let them know that you have some sort of dietary concern, and we'll, we'll take care of you. So I've got my bread. Now my, this, this bread is, is plain, no, no butter. Okay, just to make sure we're all aware of that. So I'm gonna put that in my French toast batter. You guys can see me over here. Um, and I'm gonna dip both of them in there. And I'm actually gonna let them sit in there for a sec because I really want them to soak it up, soak up a lot of that goodness. Um, I would actually, I'm kind of squeezing the bread a little bit to kind of let some air out of it and then hopefully suck up some of that French toast. And I'm trying to be real careful with it that I'm not splitting it open. Uh-oh, uh-oh, disaster has struck. Uh, we'll I love that that happened to you actually yeah. because <laughs> when it happens to real. us, we're gonna feel better about ourselves. Yeah, my bread just crumbled around me here. So we're gonna, we're gonna, have, to, we're gonna have to make it work. That's all right, that'll be a little treat for me later on. It's art, someone said. It's art. It is. Just stick some cheese down in there and glue it together. Now, the best part about cooking at home is it doesn't matter if you make mistakes. I mean, it certainly does. You'll have to start over again, but I mean, half the fun of, of life is making mistakes. Now, certainly in a restaurant setting, mistakes cost money, so we don't like mistakes, but. So if you guys can see, obviously both my pans going on here. So I'm gonna put a little bit of, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in my pan over here because I've got some ham and I've got some turkey that I wanna heat up. Now it's already cooked turkey, obviously, and it's cooked ham. So I'm just warming it up. I'm not trying to, to overcook it. I'm not trying to do anything with it except just put a little heat on it. Because remember, it's going to go into the oven as well. So there's a question, Matt. Do you have a preference on brands for turkey and ham or any deli meat that you use? I don't particularly. Um, I know Boar's Head makes a very good product. Um, I'm actually a vegetarian, so I don't eat meat. Um, so I'm probably the wrong person to ask on that stuff. We use all Hormel products in the restaurant because they're very high quality. Uh, we've actually partnered with Hormel and we get some rebates for items that we purchase through them. Um, and I'm not, we don't use them because of the rebates. We use them because they're very good products and they're also readily available through, you know, all the United States, anywhere that we potentially would open up at. Um, but I do know from my past world, Look, it formed it. It's back together. There it goes. <laughs> the egg, the egg wash saved us. So you guys see, I've got a little bit of a kind of a brown going on on my turkey and my ham here, uh, which is which is what you want, which is what I want. Do you prefer the spray oil, Matt, versus like dropping a dab of oil into the pan, or does it not matter? It doesn't matter. I, I like the spray, believe it or not, uh, because you can really control your usage with that. A lot of people have a tendency, especially home cooks, have a tendency to over oil things. 
over oral their pans, uh, especially when you're now. If I, it depends on the application. If I'm sauteing something, if I'm legitimately sauteing peppers and onions and and vegetables, um, if I'm if I'm making a recipe or following something, um, there I will pr I will take olive oil. I mean, I've got we've got some right here, so I, I will take olive oil, put it in the pan. Um, but I've been doing this for quite a long time, so I'm very aware of how much I need or how much I don't need. But also, my wife will be the first one to tell you that I don't cook a lot at home because I have started fires before at home. So, uh -oh. <laughs> okay, so you can see my awesome French toast here. So we're gonna flip her over here. And here's a good tip. So if you're at home making grilled cheese sandwiches and if you're just eating them for yourself, it's not as important. But if you're trying to impress your friends, your neighbors, your loved ones and stuff, there's always gonna be a better looking side to every piece of bread that you serve, always, no matter what, there's gonna be a better looking side. So this side here or this side here, which one looks better to you guys? I'm, I'm saying this one for sure. That one, yeah, that this one. Side, yeah, that one. This side. So see this one, I, it didn't toast all the way over here and all that kind of stuff. So that side is gonna go up. Okay, I'm gonna build my sandwich with this. This is gonna be on the inside. No one's ever gonna see it. Never, ever, ever. No one's ever gonna judge me by this side of the bread. They're only gonna judge me by this side of the bread. So presentation is key, obviously, when you're cooking, no matter what, if you're cooking at home for yourself, you're cooking for all your neighbors and friends. Okay, so we're gonna go with American cheese on this side. And one of my all-time favorites, Swiss cheese. It's going on this side. I, I don't think we have some Swiss fans on the phone because some folks were sharing that earlier on that they love. It's good. Swiss cheese does not get enough love in this world. I'm 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 sad to say that, but I love Swiss cheese. Okay, so we're gonna put our our ham on one side here. And I'm kind of just folding it over so I can keep it on the sandwich and I can get a good, good coverage on my sandwich. Like show. Okay. Now I'll take this whole fun mess over to the oven and I'll meet you guys over there in a second. This one might take a little bit longer to melt. This one has a little bit more cheese on it than the other do, the other ones do, so this might take a little bit of more time to melt. So, um, does anyone have any other questions for Matt as we're waiting for this one to melt? Because I know we're about ten minutes out from one o'clock, so I want to make sure you get your questions in. You can unmute if you have any questions. No. No question. I must have been that thorough, or they're such a or, good teacher. Or people are just that bored that they are just waiting for me to end. Like, please end this. This end. End the struggle. I think if our anything, minds are we've all blown gained by attendance. the double. <laughs> What's that? I was saying, if anything, we've gained attendance. We haven't lost attendance, so oh, I don't good. think you're boring. <laughs> okay, so Kristen, so you you claim that you were, <clears throat> and this is your quote that you were that you you were horrible at making grilled cheese at home. Absolutely so, correct. So did you, did you learn anything today? I'm just curious. I have never buttered both sides ever in my entire life. And I usually put this, put it together initially with the cheese in the middle and do the whole thing in the pan. So using the oven is going to change my whole grilled cheese game. And I love avocado. So I will be making it with avocado as well. Yeah. Avocado and bacon. Great, great combination. Don't forget about the fried egg. Fried egg is, is a key on, on, on grilled cheese sandwiches, especially if you're going for like a, a breakfast centric type sandwich. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, um, I, I have seen people, um, there's actually grilled cheese books out there that I've read, um, not prior to opening melt, but afterwards. And some people swear by shredded cheese uh, instead of sliced cheese. Um, I am a firm believer in sliced cheese. Um, I know it sounds silly, but there, there's not a war. There's not, there's not cheese war going on out there. There's not like one side of the world is, is sliced cheese and one side is shredded cheese. But um, at least for me in, in, my, in the world I live in, sliced cheese is a lot, it's a lot easier for portion control. There's a lot, there's a lot of less waste 
Um, when you have shredded cheese, there's, there's a ton of waste because you're picking cheese up, you're going over and putting it down. So pieces are gonna fall. Pieces are gonna always get lost in your saute pan or on your sheet tray. Um, shredded, shredded cheese has a tendency to clump up in certain parts of your sandwich. So what's gonna happen is if you don't evenly distribute it, you're gonna get areas that are over melted, areas that are under melted and areas that are perfectly melted. So when you cut into it and bite into it, you're gonna have melted cheese with non-melted cheese. The worst thing that happens if you're making a grilled cheese sandwich is to not have your cheese melt. Like that is, that is kind of key. So, In there. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, if you find really good bread and really good cheese and you, you follow along with, with some of these really simple components and, and, and procedures to making the sandwich, it's gonna turn out great. It's, Going to turn it's going to turn out great even if you even if you use shredded cheddar or shredded cheese it's going to turn out great so matt we have some comments about you're going to virtually send these grilled cheeses through our screens right if if i come up with that technology then i will be a millionaire and i will <laughs> a multi multi-millionaire i think uh i think apple's probably working on that as we speak i'm sure probably an apple or microsoft one of them I'm waiting There's for a couple of comments about folks learned about toasting both sides or, or using the oven. They've never done that before. Yeah, I'm waiting for smell a vision to happen. You know, if you could <laughs> smell what's going on with uh, with with um, with what I'm doing at home, you know, that would be great. Or, for, or if you're watching a cooking show on the Food Network and you can actually smell what's going on, like that would be that would be a game changer. Obviously, visually, everything visually is is better than that. But at the restaurant, you know, we like to have I like to be all encompassing with our sights and smells and sounds. You know, I want you to be completely Im immersed in what's going on at the restaurant. So here we go. I'm curious for the group, like which one of the three you saw today, if you want to throw it in the chat, you're most excited to try at home. So you guys can see the finished product here. Um, and actually, the, if you remember, the turkey and the ham were both hot when I put them on the sandwich, so that certainly helped. It aided in our uh, in our melting. Mm, smells great. Lots of comments all over the board. Looks like folks are going to be trying the first one with avocado. The Monte Cristo is getting lots of love. Kevin's going to make the breakfast sandwich tomorrow morning. I think he's going to add gravy and sausage with his. Oh, nice. French toast Cristo, John said. I'm trying to stack it here, but it's too wobbly, so I can't do that. And it's really hot, so I can't hold it either. But, but there's the... Um, oh, I see the steam coming off that one. It looks amazing. It looks so good. I can smell it. So yeah, that's that. That's the Monte Cristo with the French toast, the ham, the turkey, the Swiss, the American, and that's what you want. I mean, when I'm holding the sandwich up, you guys can see all that cheese kind of dripping out of the bottom. That's king right there. You know, when we're doing videos or we're taking food photography or we're sending food out to our guests in our dining room, like that's what you want to see. You want to see that cheese alive and kind of move it in there. It's nice and melty. Everybody, I mean, I'm, hopefully you guys can kind of taste this as you're with your eyes right now and you can kind of be like, I want to put that really gooey grilled cheese sandwich in my mouth right now, right? Definitely want to put that in my mouth. I want all of them. I anticipate for sure some road trips from this group to Dayton this weekend. Yes. So. Yeah, you guys are close. To, I mean, Cincinnati is not that far off. from. Isn't it about 45 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we actually have folks that live in Dayton and they used to commute into the office, so... Yeah, we're a little bit north of the city, um, so it might be a little bit farther of a trek, but, you know, we're up at Fairfield Commons, uh, the big mall that's up there. It's right by the Air Force Base. So, yeah, come check us out. We're right inside the mall. You can't miss it. We're an exterior restaurant right right smack dab right at the, in the middle of the mall. So if you find the Starbucks location, we're directly behind through the parking lot. Big signage. You can't miss it. Huge patio, too. It's one of the bigger bigger patios we have in the, in the company. So if you go to Dayton this weekend, ask for Chris Rack. Chris Rack is our general manager down in Dayton. Really good dude, big guy. He will take care of you, I promise. Tell him you, you, you watched a video of Matt making grilled cheese sandwiches for your company on Friday. And you're, he specifically said, come down and ask Chris. I'm not promising any sort of discount, but. 
No, that's so we'll nice. The insider. <laughs> there was a question. Do you have any future plans to move out of the Midwest and maybe go down towards Texas? So I think I mentioned at the beginning, we have folks joining us from Colorado, Texas, really all over the U.S. So that was one of the questions. Um, we're probably going to, we're going to continue to expand in Ohio for sure, because we still have a couple cities we need to hit first, like Cincinnati, Toledo, Youngstown-ish. Um, we may pop another Columbus location in, we're not positive yet, but um, we're looking in the Midwest. Uh, Detroit and Pittsburgh are two cities that are on our, on, our, on our radar right now to potentially expand into in the, very, in the very near future. It doesn't make any sense to us to go from Cleveland to Texas, you know, unfortunately, or Cleveland to Denver, or even Cleveland to New York or Cleveland to Chicago, because those are there's a lot of areas in between that we need to hit first because I'm not getting on a plane and my staff's not getting on a plane. We're probably going to be driving to these places. So our strategic expansion plan is to draw a little circle around Cleveland and then draw a bigger circle around Cleveland and a bigger circle and a bigger circle. So if you guys know the geography of the United States, Cleveland sits on the great lakes. So we certainly can't go North. So we have a nice big semicircle around uh, the North coast of Ohio that we're going to be expanding out into Detroit is three hours from Cleveland and Pittsburgh is two and a half hours from Cleveland. And those are very doable type, um, expansion plans. And Detroit is one of the bigger cities in the United States. Uh, it's huge. It's massive. It, it is larger than Cleveland and Pittsburgh put together. It is a huge, huge city. If you take total density and total, um, not even city proper, but the entire DMA, of Detroit. So we're looking possibly to pop a couple restaurants in the Detroit area very soon because Detroit and Cleveland are very similar. Pittsburgh and Cleveland are very similar. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the same type of people, the same Midwestern type of people, um, the same ethnicity, uh, a lot of the same neighborhoods, very Midwesty. You know, they're all steel towns like Cleveland was. So um, we feel comfortable about that. I mean, there's no comfort in opening a new restaurant. It's always a, it's always a a very risky move, um, no matter how established the brand is, no matter how excited people are about you coming to a new location, there are numerous, numerous reasons that you can and will fail. So there's a lot of luck involved, <laughs> believe it or yeah. not. And it's all hard work. So um, maybe Texas someday. I mean, if, uh, if Paycor wants to invest in Melt Barn Grill, then if you would like to have Paycor put a Melt Barn Grill in your city, uh, please contact Rachel and Kristen because they are <laughs> they they have a lifeline to the corporate office, and um, I do know that 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 um, that might be a possibility. So, cool. That's well, I know we're right at time, Matt. Thank you so much for joining us today. I don't want to cut you off. If there's any other questions, if anyone wants to unmute and ask real quick, but I also know folks might need to go to their next meetings. No, no other questions. We're getting lots of thank yous, Matt. Thank you so much for being here. Folks are excited to try this later today. Sounds like there's going to be some road trips. Please come check us out. Yeah, check the website out for sure. Melt Bar and A-N-D Grilled, G-R-I-L-L-E-D.com. You can find us on all the social media stuff. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Twitter. Tons of cool photography, lots of cool stuff going on. So um, that'll give you a lot more of the background of the restaurant and who we are, what we do, our backstory, where we are, where we're going. Um, you can drool over a bunch of food pictures and stuff on there. So yeah, come check us out. If you guys are ever in Cleveland, let me know, please. I'm, I'm, I'm always I'm around. I'm um, coming Memorial Day weekend. We'll have to come make a visit. Yeah, send me an email, please. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Matt, for joining us for the lunch hour today. We appreciate your time and all these tips and tricks. Yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate the opportunity. Have a great weekend. Happy Friday. Bye. Everyone. Thanks, everyone.